Hi there, this is San Diego magician Tom Interval. Welcome to another Interval of Magic. Today's trick is going to be a gambling theme trick using four aces. Now it's actually not going to be just the trick. The reason I'm teaching the trick is to actually teach magicians a move that I had published in Mum Magazine in, God, it's like 1998. So you can learn the move. It's a utility move that you can use for all kinds of stuff. But the one today I'm going to show you, I'm framing that move with a, a gambling theme trick where you can produce the four aces in, in, in a fan, not really a fancy way, but in actually a very easy way. It's a very basic thing. And it helps you practice the move as you're learning to do a basic effect of producing the four aces. So as with other videos I've done, uh, there's uh, sort of a part one and part two, although I don't label them as such. First part is the presentation or the uh, performance. The second part is the explanation. You don't have access to the explanation. That's the full video. The only people who have access to that video are my Patreon patrons. They support me at patreon.com slash Tom Interval. Now, a quick note about that. I want to clarify. I don't want you to feel ripped off by saying, oh, that, this video looks cool. The image looks interesting. You click on it and you here you are. You're watching me. But then you're like, you get to the part where, oh, now he, he's going to ask us to to pay for the explanation. Why do I do this? Especially in light of the fact there are all kinds of free videos on YouTube that teach magic. Well, a lot of those people who teach, they're either not really experienced in magic, um, and some of the tutorials don't get into the philosophies and the theory of magic. They don't teach you as much as you can learn about it. They just teach you a tutorial for the sake of the trick, and that's about it. Then, the, there are really good tutorials on YouTube as well, of magic, of course, and um, and they're done by by some people who have millions of followers, which is awesome. I'm glad that, that magic is popular enough to attract that many subscribers. I, on the other hand, uh, don't have many subscribers yet. As of today, I have about 630, so I can't really afford to give my stuff away because this is how I actually support myself, is through magic. I've been doing this for eight years, but it's really difficult. Uh, I mean, I'm doing, I've been doing magic professionally in San Diego for eight years. Uh, I've been doing magic for 30 years overall. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Long story short, it's really hard to support yourself doing magic. I, I teach magic, I do magic shows, uh, and I'm, I'm wanting to earn more money actually doing creative projects. But as part of that, I want to give a lot of it away. But I can't afford to give it all away at this point. The more support I get, the more videos I can produce, and therefore the more free content and the more bonus videos exclusive to Patreon patrons only, I will produce. So you'll, you'll have access to all that stuff. The value is my 30 plus years of experience in magic. Plus, a lot of the stuff I do is original. And even if it's not completely original and it's based on something else, as is the case today, I give you original thinking and I add original little subtleties that I think you'll really use and you can't get anywhere else. That's why I want you to support me on patreon.com slash Tom Interval. It's not because I'm greedy. I'm the only guy here at Interval Magic. I'm a sole proprietor. And I'm trying to make a living just like every other creative artist. It ain't easy. Trust me. So thank you for uh, having the patience to listen to this pitch. And I really, I really want you to stick around and watch uh, the presentation at least. And then again, if you want to learn this trick, go to patreon.com slash Tom Interval. Thanks for watching. If you play any card games at all, then you probably know it's not a great idea to do something like this during a card game, because people will think you cheat. But I'd like to show you something called the Mechanics Cut, which card cheats use to very cleverly find any card that gives them an advantage in a poker game to ultimately win the game. Now, the Mechanics Cut looks like this. It looks like an innocent enough cut, right? But what they do is, as they're cutting, they can find that card, the one they're looking for. Now, during any given card game, uh, it's standard practice to shuffle the deck like that and to cut it, right? And we're going to do that like that. But the mechanics cut is sneakier. Even though it is a normal cut, and you can see the cards being mixed up, it does mix up the cards if you want to call it shuffling. It's really cutting the deck. But it does mix the cards as you cut. But the experienced gambling cheat can actually locate any card he or she desires while doing that, right? So let's say um, we want to find the Ace of Spades. That's a popular card. The gambler looks for the Ace of Spades. He spots the approximate location. Then he hones in on it. Now, he wouldn't do this, this obviously in a game, right? I'm just doing it 
because I'm not a, a gambler, I'm a magician, I'm showing you how to do it. But Ace of Spades, I spotted it. If I use the mechanics cut to find it, there it is, the Ace of Spades. Now, if I cut one card too deep or one card too shallow, I completely miss the Ace. Okay, So let's try to find the second Ace, because we'll do a four of a kind, right? Uh, ace of Hearts. I know approximately where it is. If I use the mechanics cut, I can find the Ace of Hearts. Clubs. Let's try clubs. The Ace of Clubs. I use the mechanics cut to find the Ace of Clubs. Now again, if I cut one card too deep or one card too shallow, I uh, completely miss the Ace. So let's try the last Ace. It's surrounded by 48 other cards, so it's not going to be as easy. Therefore, I have to recalculate the position of that final Ace. Now by looking at the edges, I can tell it's roughly 10th from the bottom, roughly. But if I shuffle and cut some cards using a, um, an overhand shuffle, that allows me to position it roughly in the middle of the deck. So I'm going to look now. Now it tells me it's 25th from the bottom of the deck. If I were to cut off 24 cards, there's card number 25. Oh, you know what I miss sometimes. Well, not this time. Okay, welcome to the explanation. I'd like to teach you the cut that is at the center of the four ace routine you just saw. Now, I didn't want to teach you the four ace routine for the sake of that routine. I wanted to teach it to you for the sake of learning the cut, because it has repeated actions. You repeatedly do the cut to produce the aces, and therefore repetition will help you learn the actual cut, which is a utility move, not just for the ace routine, but for other stuff. You can use it as a control, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. It's just a good in-the-hands false cut that you'll use basically for the rest of your life. Now, um, it is my idea based on an old trick that I learned, and I'll get into that in a second. Thanks for watching and or listening to this interval of magic. If you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, along with a variety of other great magic-related content, please help support my work by becoming a Patreon patron at www.patreon.com slash Tom Interval. Also, please like and share this, subscribe to my Interval Magic YouTube channel, and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Interval Magic. Until then, may your intervals be happy, peaceful, and magical.